Okay, it's your bunkers. Bag. Yeah, so I mean a lot of people have seen this driver and they've been kind of concerned with how it's been built with the lead tape. It's, it's looks like a, it looks like a war zone in here. And the reason it is is because we had to angle. Uh, we had to put weights in certain spaces just to make the club feel right for spin mm -hmm. and for the motions if he was getting a little tugged or not. Lead weight becomes is, is truly my ultimate friend. Mm -hmm. I think it's been around for the longest time and we have a little joke about it. We say, uh, give us today our daily lead <laughs> in golf. So, <laughs> um, No, but it is a very big help because manufacturing tolerances cannot guarantee the center of gravity of each club mm -hmm. in a certain spot. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there is very good technology uh, that they produce their clubs on, mm -hmm. but yet the manufacturing process doesn't allow us to keep so many variables in check. Right. And then we get down to the, um, if you're looking at the, uh, the cog right now, the connector uh, to the shaft, that has three or four different aspects to it. Now this has two rings on it, and the orientation of how this entire cog enters the club head is off by a couple of degrees even in manufacturing mm -hmm. and I think manufacturers accept that pretty readily but it's within a range which shouldn't really affect uh, golfers but then again a golfer is oblivious to this um, the last thing is there's a little ferrule that used to go into this uh, um, sleeve, yeah. but the, 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 the ferrule uh, or the sleeve if you may couldn't be added on because we needed to angle the shaft itself mm -hmm. So we had to angle that shaft in a certain way to be able to get that club head to be in a certain spot. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's 8 degrees of true loft right now. And it's sitting still a little bit of upright of where we wanted it, even though we flattened it a little bit in the hosel right. with the shaft alignment. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing is all these shafts are flowed, which is kind of based on similar technology to the um, puring. Mm -hmm. uh, purely for one reason, that if the shaft is wobbling around when you bend it on plane, which when it's loading and unloading, will move on a different plane without you being able to see it visually. Mm -hmm. So ideally you want it on a toe up position mm -hmm. and you want it to come down that uh, the same loading point. For example, if a player's got a shut club face at loading time, you want it aligned to that shut club face. Mm -hmm. And that's something only a really good fitter and a coach in, can do in tandem. Mm -hmm. It can't be something which just is done generically on, on, on one right. scale. So, we make sure that that alignment is done. Flow, flat line oscillation with the laser. Let me hold this. Um, we get to the three wood. So the spec for him right now on his driver is 260 CPM. Mm -hmm. And we're close to D2 swing weight. It's uh, just under D2, I think it's D1.8. Uh, the three wood starts to do the same thing. But we're a little heavier in the shaft series. We're up to 70 in an S flex. Mm -hmm using the M to the 15 degree again it's a little bit more upright than standard right. so that's helping us a little bit uh, you mean static static uh, yes. lie of the club is two degrees up on it's a foot. little upright compared to the standards yeah. so we had to again angle the shaft a little bit in there mm -hmm. and yeah. if you see again we've had to have uh, a different ferrule on it uh, just so that we can angle that a little bit uh, otherwise there's uh, not enough space right. um, okay uh, we moved down to the two iron, which is basically uh, one of his uh, Titleist utility heads. And the Titleist utility heads, uh, we made sure that he added that same shaft as he has in the irons, mm -hmm. so that it feels like an iron when he comes into the ball, and the torque is lesser. He used to hit this club very long, mm -hmm. it was a little erratic for distance. Somehow steel takes that issue away. Mm -hmm. uh, the total distance, no doubt with the graphite, the ball goes further on certain hits, but the consistency of the steel right now in alignment with his irons for distance yeah. is just immaculate. That's so what I feel about steel so too. yeah, so that that's the advantage of steel and like with steel. Um, again, this irons these are new pong uh, yes, they are 950 GH shafts. Uh, we had built him a set from parallel, mm -hmm. tweaked the um, frequencies. Uh, he had a 3-iron which was built stiffer than the standard S uh, on, on, the, on the parallel tips. Mm -hmm. uh, however, when he played a set of irons, he won with a tapered tip, which we really couldn't tweak the frequencies much, but at least what we could do is balance the weights out in a way that the club felt similar to the others. So right. we tweaked the weighting of the club heads mm -hmm. to be able to counter one variable of frequency with just the weighting. So that way at least it felt the same and the starting line of each iron felt the same. Um, and of course for his wedges we had a hard time for about six months. Uh, he was uh, not really hitting his wedges very close and I think 
He's never been a very sharp wedge player until this year, where the changes really happened. And these were Japan issue Cleveland's where um, you see the blue dot. They were much lighter in weight compared to the Cleveland's that we found in Europe and in the U.S. And uh, the same wedges he's had now for over uh, six months. So his wedges were too heavy. Were too heavy. The same shaft. Exactly. Yeah. They were much heavier. They had uh, the standard wedge shaft, which I believe is the S2300. We went to an S400, but a much lighter club head. So the reason why we went to a different shaft than the iron shaft is because the motion with the wedge is going to be variable. We want lesser uh, movement of the, of, of the shaft or lesser loading and unloading because when you're hitting pitches from about 30 to 50 yards or you're hitting a chip around the green or you're blasting it out of the rough, you want that shaft to be as stable as possible because you're not really looking for distance to begin with. Mm -hmm. And your wedge swing is never really going to be like a full pitching wedge or a nine iron. Your, your sand wedge and lob wedge swings are never going to go that long anyway. Um, two players might have the exact same chipping action mm -hmm. for, in terms of acceleration and loading, but they might have completely different full swing actions because mm -hmm. they're hitting it to different distances. Right. Um, so the wedge shaft is critical, uh, and I believe that uh, it needs to be a lot stiffer. And yes, the club head needs to be ideally matched for weight so for the used rest. To be the wedges they recommended softer shafts. Well, and it doesn't work as well. Right, no. right, because they have but, to be stable. Yes, uh, but um, the other thing is that uh, the wedges do need to be in tune with the weight of the other clubs. Mm -hmm. And a lot of players I know like to choke down on their wedges. So we, the swing weight is critical because how we build the weight uh, of, of the club head is completely critical to uh, the feel of the player. Mm -hmm. So if the player is going to choke down on his wedges a lot, then we need them heavier. Yeah. And uh, swing weight for itself is just a starting point, but when the wedge shaft uh, the weight of the, the wedge shaft is completely different from the iron shaft. You have to go lighter right. on the swing weight to be able to match that field. Right. So um, every 10 grams is, is, is a substantial change in swing weight. Uh, and uh, I think uh, every 10 grams of shaft weight, uh, weight does change that field mm -hmm. uh, to a substantial degree. So the player needs to be tuned in that regard. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we've done here. And you can see actually there's a lot of weight that's been pulled out of the um, European issue head or the, the US issue head right now. Mm -hmm. right. Uh, and a lot of grind has been put on the club head to get the heel down and mm -hmm. the way he attacks the club. The yeah. forward, um, the leading edge has been blunted out a bit yeah. um, purely because he does get vertical. Right. And we want that leading edge not to dig in too quickly. Mm -hmm. So that resistance there gives him a double bounce pattern, which is quite nice. That's good. Helps him grind. Awesome. Uh, 